and healthier ones and starting to move away from the animal heavy uh, recipes. And one of the biggest questions I always come across is what do I eat, right? So it's very basic, um, but rather important question. So um, it's really easy to focus on, or get really hung up on what not to eat, but the really beautiful thing about eating a plant-based diet is that there are so many different ways to eat plants. It sounds like it might be boring at first, I guess it did to me, but it is far from it. So it just takes a um, chance, giving it a chance really, but just thinking about it in a different way and just learning what different things you might want to keep on hand in your house. And really the, the key to success uh, is making sure that you have on hand the things that you want to eat. So if you don't have them on hand, then you're going to be going out to restaurants a lot or, you know, grabbing takeout. And that's not a great way to eat healthy. So there's a few staples that I just wanted to share with you that should be staples in anybody's um, vegan pantry. And we'll just take a, a quick rundown here on what I have in my house so that you can see have some ideas of what might work for you so here's my best place to start is my bean shelf um so everybody asks where you get your protein well here is my secret it's in the beans you know it's in a lot of places actually it's also in all the grains that you see down in the bottom um, as well as all the vegetables in the fridge but um, beans are an awesome source of protein so that's just a really easy way to to get a short answer to that question. Um, so I just have a few of my favorites that I, I make sure to always keep. So, and I get the ones from 365 Organic, or 365 is Whole Foods brand. I don't care what brand you use, but they happen to make one that has no salt added um, and is also organic. And um, I buy them in bulk by the case. So they are 10% off at my Whole Foods. And I order them in advance so I don't have to count out 16 at a time. I just call ahead and they have a box uh, ready for me, a customer service, and I pick it up and check out and go. So it's really convenient. So I've got cannellini beans, kidney beans, garbanzo beans, and black beans. Those I use in many, many, many recipes um, from chilies, veggie burgers, all sorts of things like that. On this bottom shelf, I have these really convenient containers I got from Ikea. They were probably $4 a piece, I think. They, I have two different sizes. I can't remember if there's a different size also, but they're a super beautiful way to organize a pantry, not only because it's a nice airtight um, and you can see through it, but they stack everything vertically. They're so tall and skinny that they take up no shelf space and I get a really easy glimpse of what I have and what I'm low on. So what I have... Right now, I keep uh, steel cut oats. Those are red lentils and dried chickpeas, which I don't do dried bean. I don't cook beans from dry very often, but I've had these around for a long time, and I'll keep them around because they don't really go bad. Um, <coughs> these are chana dal, which I use in um, a, for several different recipes. Actually, they're really a, a tasty and hearty um, legume, I suppose. Uh, white beans, lentils, and that's tri-colored quinoa. Quinoa comes in white and red, and I think the other is called black. It looks black, and um, I get the tri-color because it just it turns out to be really pretty in a salad or anything um, that I the recipes I have where you can see the quinoa. It's just a little bit prettier than the plain white stuff. This is amaranth, which I use in um, one of AJ's muffin recipes, and. Uh, Arborio rice is really good for risotto. It makes a really creamy risotto without the cream. And I've learned after I got this that they do make a brown version. So I'll keep my eyes on that for next time. Try to stick to brown rice instead of white, of course. Um, what do I have hiding behind here? More, um, these are quick cooking steel cut oats. And one of the big drawbacks to steel cut oats is they take a long time to cook. So that is no longer a problem. <laughs> so quick cooking versions, cool. Have a couple like pre-mixes of beans, but of course you can just make your own. So that's not really necessary. And then down at the bottom, I have um, brown rice. Those are all the same, but they're just a way to store them. Brown rice, wild rice, and I have this fancy Thai sticky purple rice, which I have never tried. It was just on sale. So I decided to get it. 
and it sounded interesting. Um, the next must have, so I have down here some plant milks. So these are all almond milk. There are obviously so many kinds. There's almond, oat, hemp, um, soy, and each of them have their own varieties. This is original. Um, that's one that my husband likes the best. There's unsweetened vanilla. So it has a little extra vanilla flavor, but not the sugared vanilla. The regular vanilla is very high in sugar. And then this is unsweetened original, so no vanilla flavor and no added sugar. So a bunch of varieties there. And then I keep some, uh, these are super handy for traveling because it's just a single serve. Um, so if there's a uh, low fridge space, that's a really easy way to travel with it. Um, cold brew coffee is one of my husband's little treats. Easy Sam's Club option. Oh, nutritional yeast is a really good staple to keep on hand. That's Cosmo. Say hi. <laughs> Are you helping? Um, nutritional yeast is a a very, I don't think anybody uses it until they become vegan, to be honest. I think most people have never heard of it before, but most vegans love it. Um, it is, um, this is an opener I'd show you, but it comes in flakes and you could sprinkle it on top of salads or I don't know, any, uh, like a marinara sauce. It, a lot of people use it as like a sort of a Parmesan. It has a very mild cheesy. It's, it's not, I think it's not quite fair to call it cheesy because it's, it's not, you'll, you'll be disappointed if you're expecting that's a Parmesan supplement, but you'll find, or a substitute, but you'll find it in a lot of recipes that are trying to mimic cheeses and it does give it a really nice yummy flavor. And it's very high in vitamin B12, which is another reason that's good to use it. Um, other favorites are canned tomatoes. So I use these in so many recipes and it's super handy to just have them on hand. So I just stock up when they're on sale. No salt added, tomato paste, um, whole tomatoes I don't use very often. That's why there's just one random one that I have. Diced tomatoes. These happen to be fire roasted and no salt added, which are from Mir Glen. Um, Whole Foods carries this as well as our local Giant Eagle. I know they're not too hard to find. Um, no salt added is, is, you know, prevalent in a lot of brands, but this fire roasted with no salt is actually a really nice flavor too. And then tomato sauces I have for a couple recipes too. <clears throat> One of my favorite shelves is my balsamic vinegars. They come in so many different flavors from a lot of different companies. The Olive Tap happens to me, my local favorite. They are um, national too. So you can find them on olivetap.com. And, um, I couldn't even tell you my favorite flavor right now. There's coconut, lemon, this is orange, white. Um, from the olive tap, I will tell you a little trade secret. I know there, I don't know if you can see it cause it's so shiny, but this is called orange, white, orange, white reserva, R I S E R V A reserva. Any reservas at the olive tap are um, I guess extra, what's the word reduced. And so they're very sweet. So if you like the thick ones, if you can really tell with the bubble here, but they're very, very thick and they're nothing like, um, if you picture regular vinegar as being watery, um, this is more syrupy actually. So it, it works great as a salad dressing all by itself. Another staple I always keep on hand is this, um, hundred percent lime juice. And lemon I always keep as well and it's super great for recipes when you don't feel like squeezing out eight limes at a time you can just measure it out of the bottle up here I have some canned fruit I don't keep too much on hand because I don't use it in too many things um, it's too sweet for me to be eating right out of the can anymore but um, I've learned I've been using a great new recipe um, that I learned from a friend in ultimate weight loss that's just mixing cooked kale with pineapple and cinnamon and I used it when I was um, traveling recently and it's a fabulous thing because it's super easy just to get frozen kale somewhere and throw in a can of pineapple and it's delicious. Um, I've done the same thing with pears actually mixing with kale. It's really good. Pumpkin is good. I use that in my uh, pumpkin oat waffles. There's the recipe on my blog beansnotbandy.com and red curry paste I used to use more often. I haven't used it in a while, but it's not a bad thing to have. <coughs> These are just some overflow spices I have to refill my spice cabinet. 
And over here I have some things that are not really on my eating plan, but they're things I keep on hand. They're not bad for people getting started. My uh, husband takes these to work sometimes. These are great for anyone. This is just pre-cooked rice. This happens to be red jasmine rice. Um, a lot of different brands you can find this in. And you can see in the ingredients, just water and organic brown jasmine rice. So a lot of these pre-cooked ones, unfortunately, you will find oil in them. So keep an eye out for that. It's a good place for oil to be hiding. But that particular brand, you just have to check. And um, they turn out to be fine. And then these, uh, these were on sale at thrivemarket.com. So we stocked up. These are kind of grab and go, um, not ultimate weight loss friendly. But these are great for if somebody's really in a pinch. Um, there's just a bunch of different Indian dishes that have oil and salt. And... They are yummy, but not so good for weight loss. Um, uh, the Mary's Gone Crackers, um, a good option for kids uh, or those that are not needing to gain weight. They are just seeds. They're seed crackers. Let me get you the, um, you know, it's kind of a long list. So it's a, there's a lot of ingredients, but they're all just different kinds of seeds. Um, not something that I eat very frequently but they're low on the shelf so my daughter can get to them and they're a good snack that fills her up and they get some good uh, omega-3s in there too. Uh, let me take it real quick. So this other part of my pantry here is where we keep the cereals and these are separate and kept up high because I don't tend to eat them very often. Um, but my husband is 6'4", so I keep them up high so I'm not super tempted to indulge in all the seeds and cereals and stuff, but um, he does eat them and does just fine with them. So we keep a couple things, you know, like maybe one granola and he'll mix in um, oats with a couple different kinds of seeds, maybe some raisins, um, and just throw some cold, uh, cold almond milk on it and call it a day. And that's breakfast. Nothing wrong with that. And last thing, Important in any vegan kitchen is a variety of spices. So I'm not going to go through all my spices, obviously, but I did want to just show you this really cool spice rack that I found at Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, I have a nice large kitchen, but I didn't have a great way to organize my spices. I didn't have a specific spice rack. So I found this guy that it inserts into any um, cabinet. It takes up um, a pretty small amount of space, but it, it stacks a ton of spices in there. So I have found that extremely helpful. Um, I will do other videos in the future to talk about um, some of the other things I have, like my favorite kitchen appliances and some of the tools, and we'll go into my fridge and freezer at another time. But the last thing as far as pantry to stick with for today is my potato stash. So I have these cute little things I got um, to just keep them up off the floor, basically. So we, just, we hung these on the wall to make a kind of attractive display rather than just an unattractive storage area. So this is my stash of Japanese sweet potatoes and Yukon gold and orange sweet potatoes. And we go through so many potato potatoes just plain and in a variety of recipes that I always have a big stash. Normally one of these is filled with onions, but I just started to order Japanese sweet potatoes in bulk, meaning 40 pounds at a time. <laughs> and um, I get a great discount at Whole Foods for doing that. So I've got to find a new place for onion storage. But there you have it. There is a healthy vegan pantry that is stocked with all sorts of staples so that uh, we are never short on food. In fact, we were just traveling for a while, came back late Monday night, today's Friday, and I did not get a chance to get any big stash of groceries until today. And we've been eating good food all week just from the things that we have that are non-perishable that we just keep around, um, either in here or in the freezer. So that's another good tip too, is to plan ahead, have a good stash, if you have questions, post in comments. I will pop back in and uh, see what I can do to help you. And check out the blog anytime at beansnotbambi.com. I will be, again, starting a new video series with a lot of tips. So if you have suggestions and you need help with specific things, make sure to speak up so that I can address that. Thanks. Have a good day.